welcome to Tell Me Rune, or Tell Me Are You Not Entertained. This is the podcast where I, Andrew. Uh, oh, yeah, me, Leilani. We talk about movies and sometimes TV shows and music. Not really. But anyways, um, this week we're actually talking about TV shows. More importantly, we're talking about Disney. Um, it was announced recently that uh, that they're bringing back a very poignant star that we've all been clamoring for. Uh, not really. Uh, Raven Simone is getting a show back on Disney. Uh, that's called Raven's Home. Um, now I grew up with the old Raven. That's so Raven. Um, and yeah, I'm blown away that this is getting a reboot. What was your first reaction to Raven's Home? She got a job. I don't know that because I mean she was on the View for a while and pissed a lot of people off. So I guess she just decided to go back to her roots and be like, "Hey, this was a great show, so let's reboot this." And everybody else that did kid shows like years and years ago, they're getting their own reboot. So why not me? That is true, and I mean, yeah, I guess it was a very iconic, um, iconic. One growing up, I mean, there wasn't a lot going on, but I mean, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. Uh, To me, Disney didn't need to go this route. I think she has, like, like you said, she was on the View. She got in a lot of hot water from being on the View, and I don't know. I just, I just, I don't, I don't get it. I, I really don't. I really don't get it. I didn't think it was. I didn't think it was that memorable of a show. I mean, I watched it a lot when it first came out, and I still, I'm just like, okay. I can't, like, I, I watched it so much, but I can't tell you, like, quotes or anything about the show. Like, I really can't even name, is it Chelsea is her best friend? See, I don't even know that. Uh, and I'm proving a point, that one comment guy. I didn't need to do research because I'm trying to prove a point that I don't remember, <laughs> that I don't remember anything about this show. So, what about you? Did you watch the show at all, or? Well, first of all, we don't have to prove a point to that to that guy who's supposedly all knowledgeable and crap, whatever. So, um, obviously, he's like Raven can predict the future. But as far as that, I think it was getting to the point where I mean, I can still watch Disney per se, but it was getting out of my realm of okay, I can't really watch it, watch it. Even though Raven Simone does amazing facial expressions, and I love it especially when she gets sassy. But other than that, I didn't really, really get into the show at all. Yeah, I think you came up with a good point with, it was around the time I was getting out of Disney as well. Like when I got into Disney, it was mainly because of Even Stevens. And then I was watching a lot of Lizzie McGuire because I had a huge crush on Hilary Duff when I was growing up. My gosh, she is still fine. Um... HD, if you're if you're looking for that special someone, give me a call. Give me a call. Uh, that I, I I said give me a call. Anyways, um, but yeah, I don't know. I, to me, the best thing about that show was the theme song. I mean, I still remember the theme song a little bit. I just remember that's so Raven. It's the future I can see. And then there's other words. I don't know. I just don't understand why they had to make this. You're Disney. You're freaking Disney. Wasn't Girl Meets World ruining Boy Meets World enough of you? No, you want to take everything away. I don't know. I'm kind of waiting for them since they're taking hold of the shows and rebooting them. That I remember a lot of the Disney movies that they like uh, their own little like sub movies. And uh, if they're going to recreate those, because some of those are really still iconic to me when I was growing up. I think I just had my mic on the whole time. Nice. Anyways. Um, but anyways, I, I mean, I remember Cadet Kelly. Um, that one was really great. I like that one. Oh, that one had Hillary Duff and it was like G.I. Jane, but for little kids. Um, <laughs> you have, what was that other one? Get a Clue. One of Lindsay Lohan's many Disney movies that came out, uh, Parent Trap. Uh, Lindsay Lohan exploded on there, and then all of a sudden it was just like 
nothing. Like she left to do her be fully loaded, and then she was like, "I'm too good for this," and then she left. Double L. Don't call me unless you know Hillary Duff. Anyways. I'm like, even if she calls you, are you just going to talk to her for eight years? If And if you've been following the podcast, that's all Andrew does. He just, he wants to talk for eight years and that's about it. I mean, I'll make an exception. That's bull. Five years for Hillary Duff. <laughs> I'm willing to commit in five years. <laughs> but I don't know, like. I would much rather... I know Hillary Duff's doing her new show on TV land called Younger, so they're probably not looking for her. But, I mean, to me, I would much rather see a Lizzie McGuire spinoff show than uh, than Raven Simone. I don't know. Like, to me... I don't know. I don't know. To me, I think... Well, I mean, I can kind of understand why they probably bring that back because Disney likes to whitewash a lot of stuff. So if they don't have anything, you know, ethnicity wise, then they need to bring something in because other than that, they'd be like, oh, look, just my kid can't relate because there's nothing but white girls. That's true. And nothing is more unrelatable than white girls. Um I don't know. It's just, I don't know. I just, I'm not a huge fan, but if you are not excited or not, yeah, if you're not excited about Raven's home, you can look forward to Tia and Tamara Mowry joining back up again to do the sister, sister reboot that Disney is putting on. Um, it's not official official yet, but, um, but it's soon on the horizon. I mean, Tia and Tamara both have a reality show they've been doing for years now, which I mean, they've been getting they've stayed out of trouble for the most part. Like they've they're relatively grounded and um just they're just grounded people that just seem normal. Like they don't seem like their 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 heads got too big once they were on Disney and stuff, which is really good to me. Um, but then again, it's just another reboot. Like, I don't know. I know if they were to do a show with Tia and Tamara, Tamara, that people like my age or anything would just be like, oh, we want sister, sister. Or they would look at it and be like, oh, we want sister, sister. But then again, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. As long as they somehow incorporate Roger in there and he sings, I think I'll be fine. Go home, Roger. Um... You know what they need to do? They need to do a mashup reboot with Sister Sister and Smart Guy. Get the whole Maori family in business. Because he's a smart guy. Smart guy. I love that show. That show was so good. You don't even know. I was jo- you don't You don't remember Smart Guy? I was jonesing for the Smart Guy. Smart Guy was great. It was so smart. <laughs> <laughs> he was so smart. Um... I like how I typed in smart guy and videos of LeBron came up. <laughs> and I was like, watch LeBron James as reporter. Are you a smart guy? Oh my God. You know what been really funny? What? If he asked if he's a really smart guy and then the camera turned and it was Taj, uh, Taj Maori interviewing him. And he's like, well, yes, I am. <laughs> Wow, that is a terrible niche video that I just thought of. Like, let's just do that. Should do it. Um, but, I mean, that just takes me into more of Disney's, I don't know. That just takes me more into Disney's, like, you had Girl Meets World, which got canceled because it was very hokey. Raven's Home. Raven's Home. Raven's Home looks almost exactly like Girl Meets World, except with the spin of it's the psychic kid brother and stuff. So I don't know. I don't know how well it's going to fare. I mean, but like, like kids are more loyal to their own shows now that they have it. Like my, my nephew, my nephew won't watch a lot of shows because like he'll pick something that he's seen like eight times already. And every time he comes over, 
and they're looking for something on Netflix, he'll be like, I want to watch Jesse. And, and my niece will be like, no, you've already seen every episode eight times. We're not watching it. And I'm like, yeah, let's pick something that you haven't seen. And then we'll like go, like we'll go further and it'll, He'll be like, oh, I want to watch Power Rangers. And it's like, you've already seen all the Power Rangers. Like, she's just so annoyed. But kids these days are like, I mean, I was the same way. I was like, oh, Rocket Power's on? I've seen this Rocket Power 20 times in a row. I don't care. I still like it. Like, I'd rather watch that than any other show. So So I don't know how well it's going to fare as a new old show. Because it's kind of like, it's kind of like chips in my thing. Like, it has the same brand name, but for who it's pointed at, they don't necessarily get it. I mean, not to saying that it's hard, like, it's a complex, like, situation to get, but I'm just saying it's not like, it's like, hey, remember this old show? Well, now it's going to be pointed towards your kids, and it's like, like, that's how Girl Meets World was. It's like, hey, remember that old show that you used to watch as a kid? Well, now it's coming back. And it's slightly different, and it's for your kids. And the kids aren't going to sit there and be like, oh, yeah, it's Boy Meets World, but now it's Girl Meets World. So, No, I get it, because they're trying to bring back an error that for this TV show that was monumental at that time, and they're trying to bring back that nostalgia because they're like, okay, this is for now adults who may have kids now, so we're going to target two different groups that could probably make the show big, which is not really working out because either A, the adults now are like, this is even cornier than what I remember the original show was, or the kids are like, yeah, I can't get into this whatsoever. So I just feel as though like with uh, Girl Meets World, it was it was way over the top. And even with Fuller House, I, when I watched that, I can't do it. I was like, you watching the original, it is hokey, but again, for that time period, it was it was it was that for that time period alone. You can't recreate that because again, it doesn't transition. So I, I just feel as though they're trying to create magic yet again, but with a spin, and they're just failing. I think that's where we get the big thing about is that we give these shows a pass, like. These shows that came out so long ago, we give it a pass because it's like, oh, it did come out in the 80s or the 90s or the early 2000s. So for that time, it's fine, but then it doesn't necessarily – like the shows then can bring the creator back, kind of like how Girl Meets World was. Girl Meets World had basically a lot of the same cast, a lot of the key player cast, I should say, Topanga, Ben Savage – and um, Sean, I know I, I'm glad I only know Ben Savage as from his real name, Corey. Um, so they got the and then Will Friedel, I think, came in a couple of times. So you get the main. So they got the main people to come in. The same creator made the show. It wasn't like some fan that was like, "Oh, I have an idea, but I really liked Boy Meets World as a kid, and now I want to make it Girl Meets World." Um, it was the same creator. So you're sitting there going like, how, where did it go wrong? And it's kind of like they, so I feel like these reboots or remakes do one of two things. They either stay with the same feel kind of like Fuller House does. You stick with the same jokes. You stick with the same kind of thing. It does feel cheesy. It feels a little bit more cheesy because it's not the nineties anymore, but you're still doing the same jokes or you go completely and try to just try to be put under the blanket with everything else that's on Disney, which happened with Girl Meets World. I think it went too far into what the shows are now, and kids would rather have watched Liv and Maddie or something that they've been watching for seasons upon seasons and not really this. Because, I mean, I've watched a couple of these shows, and I've heard some interviews from Girl Meets World, and they're like, oh, yeah, in this episode, we talk about religion, and in this episode, we talked about economics and all this other stuff. So it still tried to do what Boy Meets World did, but it I think it came at it as a way that it kind of I – I don't know how to explain it, but to me, these shows nowadays make – it makes it feel like the kids are stupid almost because I watch these shows, and I'm like, this is stupid. Why are they doing this? 
And Boy Meets World does not feel stupid to me. Not in a lot of it. Like, of course, Will Friedel gets way crazy. Like, he he becomes a cartoon character as the show goes on. And that's the comic relief that you needed. But, I mean, it 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 made it taught people or kids different uh points of view and it didn't put baby gloves on it like it wasn't like oh like i watched an episode uh the other night where they were in college so it was later in the season seasons but um topanga got a new job with an editor and Corey did not know what what to do like he was jobless they did find a they had a home he went to sell magazines and then at one point he just turns around because Topanga started selling magazines and he spent all day and he couldn't sell one magazine to anybody and so finally he they had a fight and he was like well I can't be you Topanga and ever since we got married you've been sucking the life out of me because you've been doing all this stuff and I don't feel like I can do anything and there's a moment where you're like, like you're sitting there going like, Oh my gosh, this is, I can see where he's coming from, but he's so harsh that I can see where she's coming from. And it just gives you a different perspective that I like, I would have never thought any kid show would have done it. And I mean, I thought of other episodes from boy meets world that has done that. And they've talked about it. Like, uh, all the parts with Sean's dad. I mean, Will Smith's, uh, in, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air has done the same thing. Again, it was a little cheesy, but I mean, if they were to do that show again, it would just be, it would be, I don't know. I don't know how it would be, but I, just thinking about it, I don't want it to happen. And I don't think Alfonso can do it because he's doing America's Funniest Home Videos. <laughs> he's getting that AFV money, <laughs> getting that syndication. But I think it also is that they they seen that as with the kids remakes, also like with the adult themes remakes, because if you think of like uh, things like Dallas or 90210, which were older ones, which were geared more towards either teenagers or adults, mm-hmm. and they rebooted it, and yet it just it didn't do well. It, again, you can't recreate that magic. So it doesn't even matter if it's like it was something for kids back in the day or even for adults. It's not going to translate. And there's really no... There's really no way of knowing what shows are going to stick and what's not going to. So so when Beverly Hills 90210, I'm going to pick that one because I, I watched that three times, the whole series, three times. What? I did. Two summers, three times. I watched it. It was, I mean, my mom and I used to just put it on. It, there was marathons on Saturdays, and we would just sit there and just watch it. We didn't even use the internet to watch them. We watched them on TV on the soap network wait so wait you watch this with your mom Mm -hmm. yeah she's the one that got me into it nice because i remember well i was i think i like i don't i don't remember how old i was but i don't think i was supposed to watch it but i remember watching it because it had adult themes it's especially with donna but um yeah so that's that's interesting that you watch it like three times fully. Yeah. It's one of my favorite series. Um, I did watch it when I was older, but I mean that I remember growing up and hearing that theme song and it just gets stuck in your head. And it's like, it's still one of my top favorite theme songs it Has no words in it. It's just a sweet guitar riff with some saxophone and some really hot looking people I'm looking at you, Luke Perry. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, no. So Beverly Hills 90210 came out and it's, it's, so I'm going to be, I'm going to be symbolizing this or metaphor simile. It's like a simile. I'm doing an assembly. So when a TV show comes out and it's a huge hit, it's almost as if it's like the world because scientists say that the earth, the way the earth is positioned, it's in a Goldilocks kind of state where we're not too close to the sun but we're not too far away from the sun okay. where life can live and stuff and if we went to any other planet it would be really really disastrous either we're way too hot or way too cold or we can't survive the situations that are on there because they don't have enough water or something 
So when a show comes out, like Beverly Hills 90210 came out, it came out in the 80s or 90s or both. Was it early 90s? Early 90s. So we're doing research while we're talking about this. Just to let everybody know. So Beverly Hills 90210 came out. 1990. 1990. It came out in 1990. So, and then it just blew up as a major hit, right? So you have to think of what's out at the time, what's the way the people are thinking at the time, and the writers and all this other stuff, the, the cast and what's going on. So you have all those factors to where now spring in the reboot, which is, or the continuation, I should say, because they still had all the old people in it. Um, so spring forward to when th- that actually hap- came out, and you... Like there's so many sat there's so much saturation of teen soap dramas. You have Nickelodeon doing them. You have the CW doing them. You had Disney starting them. Um, ABC Family at the time was doing some of them. Yeah. So you have all these soap op- soap operas on there for kids, and now you just throw in this other one that kind of has brand recognition just slightly, and it doesn't and it just fails. It totally falls on its face, and it's because it's just not. It's not hitting anybody. It's not clicking with anybody. Um, and it's not in that Goldilocks thing. And people will reboot shows like Dallas or and Beverly Hills 90210 or 90210, and they'll keep re- getting these, and they're just like, why aren't these hitting anymore? I had a good idea. And it's like, yeah, you could have had a good idea, but it's you're trying to recreate something that's not there anymore. I don't know. That's what that's what I think of when I think of reboots and remakes, and then they just fall flat on their face. I think a Boy Meets World could have been good nowadays, but I think you make it more towards how the Boy Meets World was, and you don't treat things with kids' gloves, and you don't make the kids sound crazily overacting and stuff. I get... I know thing about the, all the the actresses and actors on Girl Meets World. It's what Disney is producing now. And it's just overacting. It's poorly timed jokes said loudly to make kids laugh. And it's just like, it's not their fault that they're having to do this, but it's what the environment is. So, but it's everybody now. I mean, every kid show is like that now. So... I don't know. That's just my thing. Good luck to you, Raven, and Sister Sister. I'm pulling for Sister Sister more, if that wasn't clear enough. (laughs) Um, But this also brings you to a blast from the past, from now what is called primetime TV, quote-unquote primetime TV, which I don't even know if that's a thing anymore. Now that you think about it, you got TiVo, you got the internet, anything could be primetime. But now you got primetime TV with... The Pyramid Game coming back with Michael Strahan. You have Fill in the Blank with Alec Baldwin. You have The Gong Show, which is coming back with, um, I guess, a legendary host from British. I think he's British. I don't know. I thought it was Mike Myers for a second, and it wasn't Mike Myers. I was like, oh, Mike Myers is getting work. And then I was like, oh, this is not Mike Myers. Um, You got Love Connection with Andy Cohen. You have... You just have all these shows coming out, and it's like, what are you doing, man? Like, it's just, to me, it's like, we're doomed to repeat history. Hey, remember this old show that got canceled so long ago? Here it is again, but it's wrapped up in a prettier bow with other different people. It's like, come on. Really? We're doing this? But, what? Do you have something? (laughs) No, I just think it's it's one of those things is it just feels like so much stuff is just being filled to be filled because I mean, you have everything that you could find on Hulu that was it's on TV. You just like, "Oh, well, I'll watch it later cuz it's going to be on Hulu or I'll wait till like it's to Netflix or whatever the case may be." And so now they're like, "Okay, well, what does Netflix and Hulu don't doesn't have? Okay, we'll put on game shows. We'll bring this back. It could be live. People can watch it because I don't think they have any kind of game shows on there. I don't think so. Uh, so yeah, so they're. I think they're trying to find a different niche to get people to still view. 
um, to tune in and all that. So, well, I also find the problem is which problem I find the problem. I'm the guy that knows all the problems and the th- answers. The problem I don't like that I see a lot is the reboots of the shows that aren't that old, like 24, and they bring in a whole new people. Or you got Prison Break coming back. Like, the dude's still in prison? Gosh. Um, then you got, which blows my mind every 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 time I see a new commercial for it, is like these TV shows that are made from movies. Like Lethal Weapon or um, a Training Day. Like, so this one movie this one movie franchise that has four movies, basically uh, four times one and a half. I don't remember. I, don't, I can't do math that fast. So basically, so let's just say an hour. So you got four, like six hours worth of uh, video footage. So if this is an hour show, you're basically making a movie, a mini movie each episode. So if we couldn't stand more than four movies of this franchise, I'm going to sit there each and every week watching a mini movie of this and how many episodes are in a season. If you're on Fox, it could be more like 16 episodes, possibly 13 to 16 episodes. So you're making me want to watch 13 mini movies of this one movie franchise that doesn't even have the same people from the original movie in it. Pass. I mean, (laughs) pass. And I've have passed. I've watched two episodes of lethal weapon and I was like, I got it. I get it. They don't mesh together. Now they're partners. I haven't seen that one before. Oh, wait. I have exactly seen this one before. And then they solve it at the end. And it's like every time they solve it. They can't not solve it. And if they don't, they'll solve it next episode or later. I don't know. I just To me, it's not, it's not exciting because I feel like I already know what's coming up. But I don't know. Well, I'm going to get on my soapbox just for a quick second. Um, it, when we're going, because I know we were talking about remakes, like for the from a TV show that was originally in the past, and then like movies made into TV shows. Um, one of my things is that when we take a beautiful foreign TV show, um, for example, Misfits, that used to be on, uh, it's a BBC uh, show that was on E4. Um, it was from 2009 to 2013, and it was about a group of um, young offenders and that was doing community ser- uh, service, and they got trapped into this electrical storm, and they gained superhero powers. So, but again, they're called misfits for a reason, and um, the show had nothing but like uh, crude humor, cursing. Uh, sex, everything that you can think of, and it was hilarious. But it still had a affluent like storyline with it. Um, so you had that on for a long time. It was a huge following. I know a lot of people like me over in the states um, like loved it. Like we had to try to either hate to say this, like download it somehow so we can watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so now they're trying to Americanize it and put it on free form out of all places, which is uh, used to be ABC Family. So I don't know how that will correlate from you have it where they're talking about sex and all that into free form. I don't see how that's going to go, um, especially some of the jokes and some of the things that they show. I, I honestly don't know. But they're, they already have four actors already uh, casted for the reboot. Or not reboot, but um, they say reboot, but I just say it's a remake. It's like a U.S. remake. Yeah, so I'm like, I don't, I don't see how the characters, especially how they developed, how they could develop on a family friendly show, whatsoever. I just, I don't, because they're very complicated with some of the storylines with drug use um, and, and just things like that. I just don't see it going anywhere. Um, maybe they'll, I, I know they're going to spin it off a different way to, to be on free form and for, I guess, to have some kind of audience, American audience for it, but I, you can't recreate something that beautiful. And I know we've done that before with other 
British dramas and and other shows, and we just destroyed everything about it. Well, I will say that um, in changing their name from ABC Family to Freeform, they are trying to run their audience to more young adult slash teens, whereas CW has tr- is trying to do this right now. They bought Riverdale and made it super edgy by having Archie, for example, and this is a real example, he had sex with his teacher. Archie in the show is 15, and the teacher that he has relations with is 34. And I was like, why is this in here? Like, no thank you. But they're trying to be edgy, and they're trying to get more people into it. So I think with Freeform, they're trying to buy shows so they can really try to shed their old name of ABC Family so I can see where they're trying to get try to make this. But to me, it's really difficult to put any British show from like British to cable America TV because they have so many more freedoms to put on their TVs. They can show nudity. They can show a lot more cursing. They can do a lot more things. Um, whereas I feel like if it was more of a, like, I don't want any more remakes, but if it was on like an HBO or a Netflix or a Hulu original where it's, where they can make their own rules and they can say whatever they want on their stuff, then I can see where it would be better. But again, I don't want any more remakes. Thank you. Um, just leave it be, let people have their own stuff. And leave it at that. I mean, I will say one of my favorite shows growing up was The Office, the U.S. version. And, I mean, there was only one season, I think, of the British one. So when they made it in America, it did explode. And it and it was for w- way more. Like, it had, like, nine seasons or eight seasons. So it's like, that's, but I feel like that was more of a show that could be played in America. It was a concept that could be played in America and work well. Whereas, I don't know. I just don't think, especially the way you describe it, I don't know how it could how it could work on a cable show. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, especially when one of the main characters, he draws a C-bomb, I don't know how many times. So, and it again, it's funny, but I, translating that into American television i just and they curse a lot like non-stop so yeah i I don't see that on freeform the c-bomb that's a compliment over there or and i know in australia i don't know about there um yeah i just don't know there's just too many remakes out there i mean it's bad enough that movies all movies nowadays are either remakes or sequels and now we're going to have TV shows. And now it's just like regurgitated. Like, and and what's scary is all the studios are like, green light it. We're putting it out there. Like, you know what scared me was Uncle Buck, the TV show. And that was just because how are you going to take this movie that's just a movie and make it into a like a sitcom that's going to go farther the first episode i watched the first episode because i used to have a website that was for articles now i just put podcasts up there um now like the first episode was just uncle buck movie the hour and a half cut down to 21 minutes and it was horrible because it's a whole length movie in 21 minutes and then the rest of the episodes were their own free and clear ideas. And I was like, why does the uncle have to be there? Why can't he go away? Like, why? Like, I kept on asking why instead of enjoying myself with the show. And, I mean, I had so much, uh, a much better time at watching, like, American Housewife than, say, a remake, like Lethal Weapon or Uncle Buck or whatever. And I commend, I tip my hat to all the originals that still come out, like um, Blackish. I mean, I don't, I don't watch that show often enough, but I mean, 
they could have plastered some old movie on name on that thing. And it's just like, no, let's, but they decided to make their own show. Like the people from uncle buck could have made that a different name and they could have had a way of the, oh, a similar show with a different name and it could have done better, but uncle, and I don't get it. Why even have, why even put uncle buck on the thing? How many Uncle Buck fans are like, oh, man, I really wish they had an Uncle Buck movie without t- John Candy? Like, who is thinking that? I don't know. I'm just frustrated. It's the same thing with Chips. They could have just had a, a movie that with a different name in the same movie, and it didn't have to be Chips. Like, but are you trying to grab everybody with Chips? I know I said this in the first ever podcast we ever did, or the second. I did do my research on that one. <laughs> <laughs> But to me, it's just like, why? Why are you trying to grab, like, it's like, oh, we got to get all those SEO from this one really old thing that's niche. And it's like, you don't need to. Just, you can have a retelling of the story. To me, it's only slightly better than a reboot because it's technically still a reboot, but I don't know. I'm going to do a drinking game to how many times you have mentioned chips in our podcast. Because the anger is still there, has not faltered at all. It just doesn't make sense. Um, and now, I mean, it's either reboots, sequels, superhero stuff, and it seems like the only person that's ever always happy about everything is Kevin Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Smith, if you're out there, please just hang out with me. <laughs> I sound so desperate. <laughs> But he's making his own kind of remake reboot with Mallrats, which I don't know if that's still going to go into the works because that's going to become a television show on the CW. On the CW? That's what I, he announced? I think. Oh, my gosh. Talk about a show slash movie that doesn't need to be on cable TV. I thought he was going to go with, like, Netflix or something. It doesn't oh, make any sense. Wait, I see an article. It says it was pitched to Netflix, so the TV series. Because at one point, I swear I read somewhere or he said it, it was something about CW. Because, you know, all, all those other shows, especially the ones that he's directed, like Supergirl and all that. So it kind, it kind of makes sense, cause especially if he has ties already. But it would be more suitable for Netflix because then he can have free range. Yeah, and... It would be so much better if he did have free range. Like, I want to see, like, if he's going to be putting out a new remake or reboot about Mallrats or one of his movies, especially one of his uh, older movies, I want to see if he still has it. Like, is he going to make it somewhat similar or is he trying to go for a whole new thing? Because his movies lately are originals that he makes up on his podcast, on his smodcasts. And it's like, okay, I see where he's going with these, but what kind of, is he going to try to recreate something from Mallrats, like the the way he created it himself back then? Or is he going to try to make it a whole new thing where it's going to be a girl meets world with Mallrats kind of thing? Or is it going to be kind of more adultish where Brody's talking about which superheroes would, how superheroes would hook up with each other. I hope my, yeah, my mic is on. Um, well, I'm looking at actually the IMDb for, for Mallrats, a series, and it looks like he's bringing in some of the original cast, like Jason Lee, Shannon Doherty, Jeremy London, uh, Brian O'Halloran. I can never pronounce his last name. Um, Scott Moser is going to be in it. Renee Humphrey, Trisha Dish. Um, so he has, I mean, it's again, he probably will add more, but it kind of looks like they're going to revisit with the original cast, um, and then go from there. But his daughter's already is in it as well. So I'm, I'm kind of assuming he might follow her as her storyline. I mean, I can see that, but I don't know. She, she's still... She's going to be in, she's already in the Askew universe already with Johnny Depp's daughter from Yoga Hoosiers. Um, but I'm glad to see that Jason Lee's in it. You definitely need Jason Lee um, and all the other people that are in it. I'm excited that they're in it. 
Um, and I'm glad to see Scott Mosier is around because they did all the, basically he helped Kevin Smith with all of his movies, like producing them and putting budgets to them and everything. So I'm glad to see that he's going to be around. So I feel like that magic is going to still be there, but you just don't want censorship on something that you hold dear and near, kind of like the misfits or, uh, mall rats and clerks. Clerks was an, on the ABC as a show way back in the day after it came on and it sucked because there was two guys that basically played Randall's part and one guy was Dante's character and it was completely trash. And was, and I think mainly because he had to censor himself and Sony is trying to censor a whole bunch of movies. I don't know why, why they're so Sony announced that they are going to be censoring all their rated R or a good catalog of their rated R and some of their PG 13 movies to be more quote unquote family friendly. Um, why? Who knows? If you want to watch a movie with your family, just go watch a family friendly movie like cars or something, but don't drag, don't drag Will Ferrell's movies that you don't think are suitable for your family. Um, so it was announced a couple of days ago, I guess. And wow, my computer is moving super slow, so I couldn't even get onto it. Um, some of the movies that they are going to be censoring, um, going through and censoring. Wow, that is really tiny print. Why is my computer like this? I don't like this at all. <laughs> So some of the movies that they are going to be censoring is 50 First Dates, Battle of the Year. I don't know, I even know what that is. Big Daddy, uh, Captain Phillips. I'm the captain now. Um, Ground, uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Easy A, Elysium, Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters 2, Goosebumps. What's Goosebumps? Goosebumps is getting censored? That's a PG movie with Jack Black. Um, you got Grown Ups, Grown Ups 2. Again, those are, I thought, kids' movies already. Um, Hancock, which you can just censor everything out of that. Inferno, <laughs> uh, Moneyball, Pixels. What the heck? Spider Man, Spider Man 2, Spider Man 3, The Amazing Spider Man, The Amazing Spider Man 2, and Step Brothers. Those are just some. Oh, my God. Um, but they're going to... So basically what they're doing is that they want to make more... They want to put out more f- edited versions so people can watch more f- movies with their family. But also in reality, they are wanting to sell these movies, edited movies, to tv studios to po- play them on like a saturday evening where they don't have anything slated um airlines they can put them on airlines for planes um and that kind of stuff i kind of get that because i was watching deadpool on the plane and certain scenes i was like wait who i had to look at my surroundings and i'm like i don't want some kid coming up and seeing certain things from deadpool but then i was like whatever i don't care i'm paying for this movie <laughs> That is true. I mean, I was in my friend's chemistry class one time, and I got off of class. We were supposed to have lunch afterwards, so he was like, oh, just join me for my chemistry class real quick. I got to get notes or something. So I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to watch Game of Thrones in the class. So I was like, I was really into it, Um, so I was watching it. And I just remember (laughs) there was a certain scene that came on, and I don't remember. It was a scene where naughty stuff was happening and and me and my friend were just glued to my iPad while he should have been listening. And I just remember these two girls behind me and they were just like, Oh, this is so disgusting. And then Peter Dinklage came on the screen and then she was like, Oh, I love this episode. (laughs) I was like, it's yeah, exactly. That's what I thought. (laughs) Um, of course this is getting backlashed, uh, backlash from, well, the voice of our generation, Seth Rogen, criticized in a tweet. Can I just say that is, that's it. 
That's that's what the world is coming to now. Seth Rogen's tweet has talked everybody. That's it. He doesn't need to come out and make a video. He doesn't need to come out and talk to anybody on their show or late night show. No. Let's just do a tweet. That'll be everything. And I I'm I'm actually pretty ecstatic that it got enough to where somebody was like, I'm going to write about this on this website, uh, the Hollywood reporter.com. Um, basically he wrote, Holy crap, please don't do this to our movies. Thanks about the clean audio, the clean versions. Um, and Sony's home entertainment group said in promoting the program films, uh, Films of all ratings can be adapted as clean versions. However, the extent of such a, a, a adaptation can vary. Um, the clean version allows viewing for a wider audience, giving people the chance to watch their favorite films together. So that was his rebuttal. Uh, as of right now, I have not seen anybody, any, anybody else's tweets <laughs> or anything, so... Usually those parts that they're cutting out is the reason why it's their favorite film. So you're cutting those things out and you're just going to be making a hot mess where things don't make sense because you cut out a certain joke that could be implied somewhere else and then you're lost. I just, I, I don't, I don't, I don't understand why they would mess with something. It, they're rated for a reason. And if for some reason you can't watch it with your family, then it shouldn't be a movie you should be watching with your family in the first place. And then playing devil's advocate for a little bit. Um, so Sony produces these movies. They basically have them on its catalog. And basically they can do whatever they want with them. And so the the version that's out there is always going to be out there. The R-rated version or the PG-13 rated version. Or in Goosebumps' case, is Goosebumps PG-13 or PG? Because what are you going to censor out of Goosebumps? Um, wow, Travis Scott's Goosebumps came up. I wanted the movie. Thanks, computer, for not knowing me at all. And they say these things are... Get, yeah, it's PG. Goosebumps is PG, people. What are you taking out of this? Anyways, um, but that version's always going to be out there, and then they can sell these off to airlines and stuff to be on better versions. And I will, I will say this. If I watch, see a movie that's on TV and I really want to watch it, and it's on cable, I will just go to my computer and watch it on the internet anyways. Like, it's not worth it. Yes, the curse words are going to be taken out, which I don't really care about, but some is going to be edited for time, so they do cut out some jokes, or they cut out a key thing, and you're like, oh, I can't believe I missed that. And also commercials. Why would I want to watch commercials? So just go to the internet and watch it. So... Seth Rogen, put down your phone for a second. I know you're listening. Um, I'm going rogue, and <laughs> this Joe is going rogue. And <laughs> um, so just um, just calm down. Your movies aren't going to be touched because they're too filthy already. And also, nobody wants to watch them with their family. Nobody wants to watch them, period. Um, <laughs> I watched the interview once. That was it. That's all I needed. And I only watched because the hacking thing. And, and it wasn't worth it. I wish they would have taken it and burned it to the ground. Um, tw- the night before was garbage. Um, Pineapple Express, not that great. Uh, this is the end. The only good part was Danny McBride. Uh, and now I'm just going off on it. I'm getting personal. Uh, Neighbors was bad. Uh, now I will say though, there is edit. There's, there are times where I think jokes could be cut out. Whereas I saw it Baywatch the, uh, the, when it first came out, the Sunday it came out again, I'm not doing research cause who cares about that? Um, <laughs> this is going to be a really terrible running joke that nobody's going to get unless they go to their, our YouTube channel, tell me rune and look up that one podcast about the gorillas and look at the comment. Um, but there was a whole bunch of jokes that I was like, this has nothing to do with anything, and it just seems awkward. Like, the whole time in the morgue. Like, they could have cut out that 
the thing. I know they probably left it in there because it's like, oh, it's a little funny joke that, and it was kind of funny, but it just went too long. There was scenes where it just went too long, and it's just like now it's just awkward. Cut it. So, but don't 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 get over a bub. Don't get over this. Like, I mean, get over this. I don't know. I think you just had like a therapy session about how much you don't like Seth Rogen. I just, I felt it, especially when you were going on a tangent about his movies, which he's probably going to tweet about you now. Hope you know this. Yeah, he's going to tweet me, holy crap, just leave my movies alone. Thanks. (laughs) (laughs) It'll be the same tweet. He just retweets it at me. (laughs) Gosh, that would, I would kill to do that. Um, But that one's, that one's for Joey because he hates Seth Rogen. So... That's what we share in common. Uh, I don't hate him. I just don't find him particularly funny. I think it's, I think it's the comedy, the brand of comedy. It just doesn't. It, I don't find it witty. I don't find it funny. I just, I'm just like, oh, okay, that's there. Great. And especially after uh, what I heard, what they put through all the animators and for Sausage Party, I don't have any respect for that movie, and I will never watch it. I don't care what happened in it. Or what anybody tells me I should watch from it, I will not watch it. So, yeah, done. Do you have anything about Seth Rogen that you want to add to this? I absolutely do not have anything to add to your hate of Seth Rogen. Did not know Joey didn't like him either, but I can kind of see that. So, but I don't, I mean, I don't really watch most of his movies, so I can't really say much. Uh, yeah. Shout out to J Dog, Joey. Um, but yeah, it's just, it was, I don't know. I'm looking at Seth Rogen movies now. I'm just like, ugh, there's none good ones. There has to be one. Nope, there's none. There is none. There is not a single one. Who was he in Kung Fu Panda? The only what? Wait, oh no, now I remember him because I was like, what was he in Donnie Darko? But never mind. So he was in one good movie. I don't necessarily claim that as a Seth Rogen movie, though. Like, I'm talking about this is the end, an interview, neighbors, like where he's like predominantly at okay. in the movie. Like he just makes it like a cameo, like like Green Hornet stunk. Uh Funny People was horrible. Uh I don't want to even go through this. It's not even worth my time. <laughs> but but yeah, I don't know. I just don't think I think first of all the censorship is ridiculous. I mean, I get like censoring music if you don't really want to hear like somebody bomb the F word in your rap song over and over again, I get it. But if you're listening to rap, know what you're getting into. Um, but clean movies is just ridiculous. Just go watch a family friendly movie or a Disney movie or something like don't, don't opt in for Talladega nights. If you can't handle, I don't even but coming at you like a spider monkey? Like, what is... Is that the line that people are nervous about? Shake yeah, shake it back, Riggy Bagby. Um, I'm still flabbergasted by Goosebumps. What are they censoring from Goosebumps? We're taking out all the monsters. Like, <laughs> like what is that? I don't... I, I really don't get it. I don't get Goosebumps at all. But then now I'm intrigued to actually watch the the cut movies to see what they felt as though was not proper that that they had to take it out. So I'm I, I'm kind of intrigued by that, and I kind of want to do a podcast about it. Like whenever they start doing that, and we're like, hey, these are the things that they took out, and no. We should do a we should do like a mystery science theater. And like film ourselves watching it and then commenting about what they took out and stuff. Because I would love to do that. I would like to. Uh, I'm starting with Goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> Sony. 
Goosebumps. I first of all, I would have to rewatch Goosebumps. <laughs> but um, hey, Sony, anybody at Sony listening to this, one of the seven people that are subscribed to us, um, if you work at Sony or have an in at Sony, hey, Seth Rogen, I know you're still listening after all that. Hey, I, you know, I was just kidding, right, buddy? Um, if you want to get us those videos, that would be great. Uh, just drop them off or send them through Google Drive. Google Drive is good. I think I have enough space on there. I'll take out the Ides of March. It wasn't that good of a movie. Um, but yeah, just drop them off. Start with Goosebumps. Uh, end with Grown Ups 2. I don't need to watch that movie again. Uh <laughs> So, but yeah, I think that's good. Yeah. I th- I I think we talked in about enough about Disney remakes, why remakes fail, which uh, that might be the title of this podcast. Um, bagging on Seth Rogen movies, uh, censorship. I don't know. After that tweet, now I feel like I'm for censorship of these movies. <laughs> I don't know. I get it. I, there's there's been times where I'm like watching a movie and I forget some part is in there and then it's just awkward as I'll get out. Like the beginning of Jerry Maguire. Jerry Maguire is a wholesome movie basically throughout the whole thing. There's not a lot in there except in the beginning of the movie when he's at his girlfriend's house and they're just like having that romp like sex in the beginning and then they're just sitting – then after that like – it goes on for a little bit, and then you're just like, "Oh, please stop!" And then they're like, "All right, let's let like she says something that I don't want to repeat." And then she goes, "Let's let's talk about this." And they go talk about his like bachelor party that he's gonna have, and they're like eating strawberries naked with each other. And I'm just like, "Why is this in here?" Like the rest of the movie is so, like him with Renee Zellweger and the kid, and him with Rod Tidwell, which is Cuba Gooden Jr. And getting him gigs and stuff. Like, it's a redemptive movie, but they have that in there. I guess they were just trying to show, like, kind of, like, I mean, not playboy behavior, but, like, that side of him. And it transitions into a family guy. So I can see it, but, I mean, they could have probably toned it down a little bit. And with me talking about a Tom Cruise movie, does that mean he has to be in the thumbnail? <laughs> Because it's not. It's just not happening. I should also make a drinking game just for these podcasts this week with how many times you mentioned Tom Cruise. Well, it's The Mummy comes out. And so guess what? I'm going to be talking about him because I had to do two videos about him, essentially, naming him. Guess what, Tommy C? I know you're listening with Seth Rogen. That's it. <laughs> I know you're there. Um, you're not really there. I know why, but I'm not going to say it so we don't get hate mail. Um, (laughs) anyways, um, Raven's home. Good luck. Sister, sister, I'm pulling for you, but yeah, I'm pulling for you. I'll, I'll, I'll stand behind that one. Um, remakes of old TV show game shows. You do your thing as long as you can. Uh, reboots and remakes of TV shows that used to be movies go die in a fire. Um, what else are we talking? What else do we talk about? Sequels. <laughs> that that's about it. Just mostly remakes, reboots, censorship, and and Seth Rogen, who's definitely going to be in this thumbnail. Um, yeah, guess what? That's it. I'm not watching any more of your movies. Make better movies that I would like. Just me. Just me. That's all I want. Stop making these stupid movies. And if you like Seth Rogen movies, that's good for you. I'm glad you I'm glad he has fans that like his movies. Personally, I don't I don't find them funny. And I'm not gonna be mean because everybody likes what they like. Wait, wait, you just said you're not going to be mean, but yet you were, like, bagging on him bad. Yeah, I'm not going to be mean. Like, I didn't talk, like I didn't attack him personally. Like, uh, this isn't YouTube comments where I'm just like, you know what, Seth Rogen? You got red hair. Like, I'm not going to attack him like that. I'm just like, hey, I didn't particularly like Pineapple Express. 
and I don't like Green Hornet for sure. I don't. I, a lot of people agree with me on the reviews of that movie, but but yeah, join us next week where we talk about another topic. <laughs> We have nothing planned whatsoever. Yeah, we're supposed to do another podcast in like a couple of days. So be ready for that. Um, Yeah, so this is the end and we'll catch y'all next week. Bye.